the purpose of this demonstration is to show you how to throw a foot ring onto a, onto a bowl. This is uh, five pounds of clay and it makes a medium sized bowl. That's a bowl which is for kitchen use. Maybe fruit bowl. Like some people keep their car keys in them, but they're just a useful size in the kitchen for mixing. Fern foot rings are quite appropriate for bigger bowls. Over about three or four pounds, I would normally throw the foot ring rather than turn it. I use this part of the hand here for making my bases, whether it's a bowl or, a, or an oven dish. Um, it gives you a nice round shape. I'm going to check the the depth of that with a, a needle tool and that's a little bit deeper than it needs to be. One of the advantages of throwing foot rings is that you can get the bowl a little bit thinner and lighter than if you're having to leave a lot of clay to carve a foot ring out of. So that's about the that's, that's fairly minimal. That's about half an inch. And that's appropriate for the for a bowl this size. It'll keep it fairly light. I use a, one of these little blue mud tool sponges for throwing. I find that it's very slithery and just doesn't catch the clay in the same way that the skin of your fingers does. So I just use it on the outside, particularly for um, pushing the wall up in the first place, I can push pretty hard with it, as it gets bigger, the rim starts to flare out. Now I'll start to shape the bowl. These are porcelain ribs which I cut out of a flat sheet of, I just roll out a sheet of porcelain and then cut out lots of different shapes. I like them because they're made out of clay. I do prefer them to wooden ropes, partly because I can get the shapes that I want. These larger bowls do need a rib to do the final shaping on the inside. It's very difficult to do that with just your fingers because your fingers are too small. I try and get a shape that springs from the very centre of the bowl and ends on the rim. Leave the tension going all the way up. Trim a little tiny bit of clay off the off the bottom there, where it's going to eventually be. I'm going to eventually throw a foot ring. Cut it off the bat with a twisted wire, which will leave a shell pattern on the the base of the the bowl. Now we're going to dry this out a little bit, maybe for a day, possibly two. Not more than that. So I'll just um, I'll put it over here by the, by the stove. Let it, let it dry for a little bit. I have a selection of these chucks, which different shapes and sizes for holding different Pots. Originally I used them with the clay soft, but but these the clay has dried out and they're still they're still pretty good. And just they they're quite heavy so they sit on the wheel quite happily. I don't have to I don't have to secure them to the to the wheel head. I think that for these bowls I will need to use two. I'm going to invert the bowl over the chuck. And it's going to sit there under its own weight. I'm going to just remove this um, excess clay from the throwing. It's still very soft. It's still, it's still completely plastic. So I'll just mark that where I'm going to attach the foot ring. Roughens the clay a little bit, makes the bottom better. I'm going to pull a coil of clay. Do. 
you can just roll it out as you would normally roll a coil of clay. The advantage of this is that the, the coil is, um, is fairly even and it's wet. So it adheres to the old clay very nicely. This is a little mud tool, the blue mud tool sponge. Very slimy, very nice for that operation. Just pushing that onto the onto the pot. I want the foot ring to be stout enough so that I can pick up the pot by it when I'm glazing. But I also want it to reflect the, the rim of the bowl. I, I leave a little groove there to make it obvious that that foot ring is joined on. So the pot doesn't grow out of the foot ring, it sits on top of the foot ring or inside the foot ring. matter of personal preference. I think this is now firm enough so that we can decorate it. I can, I can hold it by that. Um, one of the great advantages of these thrown foot rings is there's plenty to get hold of so it makes it much easier to decorate. I think I'll just stamp it upside down of course. I'm going to use this uh, white slip, which is just a solution of white stoneware thrown in clay in water. And I've got it mixed to the consistency of single cream. I decorate using these rubber brushes, which you can buy in art material stores. Somebody gave them to me, and they're a great find really. We used to make similar things out of rubber kidneys. We used to just cut the rubber kidney to the size we wanted. But um, these rubber brushes, I think they're lovely. They're not designed for use with slip, but they're really very nice. They're designed for painters using acrylic, I think. I've got a selection of them. Got a little spiral in the bottom of that, which will, which will show eventually. And my decoration is just going to echo that. I like a sort of certain amount of randomness in the decoration. It really suits the, you know, this wood firing where I'm going to. The wood firing is going to change this quite a bit. It's going to because it's going, to get, it's going to get a lot of wood ash from one side, not the other. And then I'm going to put in salt into the kiln as well, which will change all this. And we'll see. But anyway, that's it. Here it is, after it's come out of the firing. You can see the marks where the pot has sat on china clay wads during the firing. and how the wood firing has enhanced the, the wire mark on the bottom of the pot. And the effects of the wood have been enhanced by adding a bit of soda, which has given us this nice salt glaze effect on the raw body.